Welcome back to Mega Base in the Book. My name is Nilaus and we are continuing on this glorious factory. I have some really cool design that we are going to get started on in order to update our or to improve our updates. And it's going to be a massive new project. So I'm really looking forward to that. Before we dive into that, uh, I just really want to take a second to thank the patrons who are supporting the channel. Because uh, this is the reason why I don't do uh, do any in in video ads or anything like that. So thank you very much everyone who is supporting. I know that uh, maybe Elden Ring or whatever I'm playing right now is not your cup of tea, but there will always be Factorio, there will always be uh, Factory Games uh, as the primary thing here on the channel. That's why you probably came here. So uh, thank you very much for your ongoing support. It's super amazing, I love it. So what is it we want to do today? Well, we do have some things that are not working great. Uh, the blue circuits, that's just always the same. Um, plastic, I. I think that's probably going to be okay-ish. But batteries, I, we know we are going to be requesting a lot of batteries. So I think I'm actually going to build another battery build down here. And that means we can take anything like that and this one. So that goes out. I'm going to take these two out. And then let's just build this one. And if it stamps down, it does stamp. I'll take this out. There. And we can now have our Spidertrons building this. Let's see how that works. But that's not really what we wanted to build. We have uh, we have another thing over here. I have taken out a lot of working space. So let's head on over to this location because we are going to be building at that location. We're going to be looking at, this, at our updates. So if we look at a mining location like this and we are just looking at it and go, well, could we make do with less active entities? Because if we count active entities, that's what is causing us to slow down. Active entities, miners. Could I do with fewer miners? Well, I could if I beaconed and module them. Could I do with fewer belts? Yes. If I didn't transport things on belts, I could. Could I do with fewer furnaces? I could if I, uh, if I have more beacons affecting each furnace. Could I do with fewer inserters? Yes, I could. Instead of putting on a belt and off a belt and into a box and then into a train and all that would uh, definitely minimize the number of active entities going around here also splitters here that's also something that adds up and uh, belts that are not full is something that also adds up so definitely we have some potential here if we can just do that but that seems a bit utopia like no belts fewer inserters more fewer miners and still the same throughput well that's what we're going to try and the way we're going to try this is... Oh, wow, that was so close. Wow, 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 wow. That was so close. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, well, nothing bad happened. We are going to go over here and have uh, just prepared. We are, of course, missing more on, on iron, but this copper is sort of an accessible area, so we're going to be working on this. Now, suppose we just have a line... What? A line going through here. And we want to have a... What if we just put a station like right smack on the middle of this? Like that. And we're going to give you a nice name. Uh, I'm not going to give you a nice name right now because you're probably going to be moved a hundred times again. So if uh, the first one is going to be a train moving in or the locomotive, then I could be doing stuff like this and then mining directly in. Ta-da! We are mining directly in. It's at 0 0.5, but it is at 790 productivity. And it's the productivity that really saves us here. But what if, what if, suppose, suppose, suppose that we did something like this. Is that correct? I don't know. And there and even this one so now what is the speed 3.25 and to 790 that means actually if we summarize this every miner is now outputting 28.9 or per second that's half a belt and that means the full thing is outputting more than a full belt output and we just put that full belt more than a full belt directly into a a wagon. I'm going to do that because I'm going to end up with tons and tons of stuff. So that's not bad, right? That's not bad at all. So 
we just do this part all the way down first of all we are going to definitely get this part and just get all the way down there and we're going to do the same thing up top except what I really need to do is I need to make sure that I know exactly where the intersections are. So that's an intersection and... Oh, that's interesting. If I cut it here, it actually shifts everything else by one tile. Interesting. So we're definitely going to do it like this instead. So this is four wagons, and that's going to be eight wagons. There. These are, of course, not going to be here, but they will be helping me to figure out if I can put it like this, like this, and like this. Those are the three options I have. Closer to the front, in the middle, or closer to the back. Now, why is this important? Well, I'm not going to be able to feed it out here. I need to make sure that I have my power poles embedded inside this location. So we're going to start by something, something like this. Um... Also, it just doesn't seem right to me to do it this way. It seems more correct that I push this one back. It's going to be the same. The reason is that I need to make sure that if I build this and then I tile it, then I can also tile it there, I think. There. No? One, two, three. That does not make any sense at all. Um, yeah, that's actually going to be down there. Yeah, I wanted this to be as close as possible. And that, again, means I push this one further back again. There. All right. All of this is super meticulous. And I can put... So this is... Closer to the back of the wagon. This is the middle of the wagon. This is closer to the front of the wagon. And they are all as really important. Never ever have these being... If you have them aligned like this. Then it's 1.25. Because it's only affected by three sources. One, two, three. If I have this one, it's affected by... Okay. Like this. This is B2 because it only affects by these three. This is speed 2.25 because it's affected by all these four. So we have to avoid that problem. And that means it's time for a power pole. Um, and here's a bit of a weird thing. I can put that here and it will cover all of it. And then... See, I can't build it here. So I have to push it towards the back, middle, and front. And I'm going to take another one. Which obviously again needs to be powered sort of from the side maybe. So this is six wagons. And then I just get uh, one, two, and then we're at the end. Like that. So this is now our setup. And what we want to do is we take this out. And we are going to build it like this. Go. That is now the full build, and that then we have to say this is uh, let's see this is the front. Oh, this is the furthest back. This is the middle. So that means it goes like this, and it actually means I can also do. That's going to be the intersection, or is it? Well, yeah, it is. We want to cut it as close as possible because we want to make sure that it's only building what it needs to be. Uh, I, can't actu I actually like to do this as well. There we go. All right, that's that's going to be our module. Let's do that. Let's uh, have this as our module. This will be available. Now, here's another catch to this part. If we build it here in the middle, then this one has 217, and this one has 344, and the middle one has even more. But what if we are not so lucky and we kind of have to build it further sort of out here where it's kind of on the edge of, of where it can just barely be there, right? Like, for example, like the intention is that I want to build it here. And then I, if I build it again further down, then we're going to have all sorts of problems. So what I want to do, or for example, up here even, if I just built this one, this one is not going to run out anytime soon. 304,000. 
and this one has 178,000. So if anything runs out, this is the one that runs out first. The fact that these middle ones are not powered is kind of annoying, but it, I, it just means that I have to feed power in from both sides. It's just a compromise. I can't see any other way to do that. Anyway, um, what I really want to do here is, is make sure that I don't send something in if the front one is is out of power. Ideally, also if the back one is out of power, but that would require more setup in terms of sort of, uh, like, if this one is empty, then send a signal. If this one's empty, then send a signal. If either of those are empty, then uh, stop the station. That's too much because we want to make sure that we, we are doing this for updates of the uh, things. So what I'm going to do is monitor this, read resources for this mining drill, not for the entire patch, but for this one in exclusively. This will now send out how much it has available. And if this is zero, I want to stop the station. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an enable and I'm going to use the anything. If anything comes in and it's greater than zero, we're good. Anything is coming in, it's greater than zero. If everything, if it's false, if there are no inputs. So when there's no inputs at all, it's false. That means if this one ever runs out, this one gets no signal and it's, it's then, uh, it then stops working. Great. That's another little thing. Now we can actually set up a proper name for it. I'm going to set a name up so that it doesn't get confused with the other one. So that will be here. And then get copper as that's what we're building. There, that's now the name. I'm not going to enable the station because, and this is where things get really complicated afterwards. Uh, it's not, this will be part of a different type of build. Let's see here. I did a test here, which I didn't like, so I had to redo my recording, and that's what we're doing now. That one, and a miner, and a beacon, and a... There, and then I'll call this direct mining. And then I also want to snap it to grid, relative. The height is going to be 6, because that's... Now the width is six, two beacons here, and the height is also six. Does that make any sense? That means if I place it here, the next one can be, no, it's not, doesn't make any sense. Height is eight, because that's three for the beacon, two for the rails, three for the miner, and this line here is repeating, so that should be good. Now I'm going to take all of this out. I'm also even going to take this part out. And once we've taken all of this out, we are going to disable our rope ports because we want to sort of template this as much as possible. And let's take it from in here. We now need to figure out where is the first place I can make it. I mean, this I think is good enough. If I look at it over here, I want to then make sure that it's the one to the front of the train that is more likely to run out. So if I put it down here and then we look at it, this. So I just need to make sure that this part, front one, has less than the back one. As long as that's the case, it's all good. I'm going to take it out and go one back. Now, 104, and then that doesn't really work. Thirty-four thousand is just not enough to start building stuff like this. Definitely not. So we, we back to this, eighty-one. And 187. Good. I'll take this. We can build here. We can build here. We can, if I build it here now, that's actually good. 103 versus that. But I can definitely not build it like this. But could I build it as such? No, it's, it's simply not enough. So this is probably as good as we can make it. This is 103. That's the lowest one. This is 81. That's actually not that great. Would it be possible to take the whole damn thing and just uh, undo? Copy. One down, one over. That's good. That's good. Oh, this is bad. And that's kind of the finicky thing about this. That one. 
I'm gonna keep it like this. This is a bit low. But even 81,000... Oh, 123? Uh, 104. So this one's actually... This is the this is the part I don't want. This is exactly the stuff that I didn't want. How did that happen? This is miserable. This is what we did not want. I can't remember where I placed it. Is it like this? 103, 81. Yeah, that's the best we can do. Now, I, it is also possible to sort of put an extra one further down. Like, um, like here, for example. But even that would not get us very good numbers. So I'm not going to do that in this case. And of course, this means, and I'm sure that a lot of people go like, no, you have, I don't know, 35 million and you're only using a tiny bit. Yeah, I am. And that's kind of, I'm not going to say the problem of it, but it's definitely a thing about this um, that we have to sort of consider. Now I'm going to enable so we can build all of this. So how does this work now? Well, <clears throat> this is uh, only half of it because we also need to make sure that we have some, uh, let's see, do I have that? No. Yeah, so this is only the smelting part. So, or the mining part. We need to get this into a smelting part. So let's try and see if we can build something for the smelting. And that's going to be really difficult and really weird. So let's start by building something and then see if I can, see if I can get that. Mm. Okay, this is... This is difficult. <laughs> Do I have furnaces in my inventory? Nope. So I'm just going to go over here and grab some furnaces and some more modules, obviously, from our train. Oh no, the train is bad. The train has been stopping everything. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I did not think of that. That's stupid. There we go. And then I'm going to get... T intersection... Go. Move it. T intersection. And then I'm going to get my train off the main line. And there we go. All right, that was not off the main line. Good. Uh, let's get some of these, some of these, and it's going to be, and then also a furnace. We know we have a furnace here. Electric furnace, good. And the rest we have, I think. So we're going to build it here instead. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to try to see if I can figure it out. What I want to do is I want to have one lane that is our... Uh, our output lane and then on either side I'll sort of have a train coming in with raw resources and they'll sort of be processed raw resources go directly into a smelter and then go directly in so that means I'm going to need to have the distance one two three four between them yep like that that's going to be the magical distance one two three four there and this one is the outbound and the other ones are the inbound. So I'm just going to be extending them out here a bit so that we can kind of see the difference. Good. Right. Um, I am going to take a furnace that is here and I will need to figure out how to build it. It'll be at this location and I want to make as much as possible. So I'm going to have to do something like this and go. Something like, oops, something like this, and I will go that one. And you will then need to be really deep, close to it. And can I then put a box in here? Yeah, I can put a box in there. I think I'd, oops, I think I'd rather have you being here so I can have that box closer. And I'm going to have find a power pole there. So we stop blinking. All right, so now we have it, and this is going to be a, uh, that's not great. 
You're gonna be. Has to be open here. There you go. So, this is 12 wide, 12 tiles. This is three of tiles. That means there's nine tiles left. That's awful because if it was five, it could be one and a box, one and a box, and one and a box. So, how the hell are we gonna solve that problem over here? Yeah, that's um, that's that's a that's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing. Um, I think that we are going to do somewhat similar here. We're going to have to build those both of these at the same time and sort of connect them like that and like that. And you will now be. I think it'll be better if they are like. This is four from this tile. This is four from this tile. I think that's going to be better. There. So we have power. And now it's just a matter of figuring out how do we unload this one. Let's start from here. If we just unload, unload, unload. And then go boxes here. Box, box. And also we have to remember that whatever I build over here will also be replicated on this side. Because I come into the train and unload to both sides. That's the intention at least. And now... Well, this one, what if I, what if I unload here and instead just bring it over to that side? There. So you just put it in here. This one, it's B13.4, is going to output 5.025 per second. So it's not even close to capacity of these and not even close to sort of adding more capacity. So this one goes in, gets on this belt. This one can pick up both the five point something, five point nothing and five point nothing here. So it's going to be picking up 10 per second. It can take 10 per second from a belt. No problem. Eh, not no problem, but it can. And then I will go. So can we just do the same thing for this part? Right? That would, that would kind of imply that this went over here and that went like uh, just 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 move a bit all right here does that make sense no So basically what we are saying is I'm only outputting to one location. Hmm. I don't like that. I think it's better to do this. Because I need to be able to have a box here. It doesn't have to be a full box, but it's got to be carrying something. Yeah, so is this repeatable and is it workable? <laughs> I'd really love to put lights in here. Right, so let's see. I'm going to get a training. Okay, what I think we have to do here is cheat. <gasps> what do I mean by that? Well, I need to see that this is actually working. So what I need to do is I need to have an infinite demand uh, supply here and here to see if it's actually... Uh, unloading. What I need to do is also this part has to go here. There. Okay. So this train is coming in and what I'm going to do is I am going to switch to a cheat mode here and then make some weird trains and then switch back. So we now have these weird trains. This is really good for testing purposes and nothing else. So why is it good for testing purposes? Because I can do an infinite filter of saying max copper plates at most zero. That means any copper plate that goes in gets deleted. This one, I can make an infinite filter of just saying 50 of that. That means it always has 50. Now it'll just go and then we'll, we'll, be, we'll delete anything that comes in. And then what the only thing we are interested in seeing is, does this flow? This one is, the theoretical speeds are fine. 13.4, 13.4, yes. And 
none of this seems to be stockpiling. This one can feed it in, no problem. Even though it's... This one is... Okay, so what I'm just... Basically, basically what we want to see is... Is it possible to fill up this? Yes, this buffer gets full. This buffer gets full. Perfect. Next question. Is it possible to feed the input for these furnaces? Yes. Yes. Next question. Is it possible to unload from the furnaces at sufficient speed? Yeah. And yes. And then the last part is, is it possible to pick up from both furnaces from with the belt at this uh, speed? Yes, it is. Nothing on this belt gets stuck because there's also some travel time here. And then we see if this thing here, is it tileable? It most certainly is. Is it tileable in the other direction? It most certainly is not, damn it. <laughs> but I, I don't think that's a big problem. I think that's something that's totally fixable. I think because it, it, it'll it never be tileable in both directions at the same time. Yeah. Question is... If that'll be enough, yeah, I think that'll be enough to fill up this part. And then all of this is just going to be the same thing. This one will be the same. This one will be the same. And this one will be the same. And then the question is, is it now tileable? It absolutely is. Great. So... I'm going to hurry up and delete all this so we don't see anything that's fishy here. There we go. And I'm even going to go one step further and just put them in here. There we go. Never to be seen again. Good. That was like the easiest way for us to do a, a little test of the, to see if it's working. So what we have now is we have the base ingredients. We have the base ingredients down here. We have the, smelting, uh, the mining setup. And we now have a way for us to take direct mining and get it in here. Now, we do have another concern, and that's on the ratios. Now, remember this part. This part was outputting for each of these 28.9. And since we just got level 80, it's even more. It's probably closer to 30 at this point. And so that's another little problem, right? This one is... Like the, the, let's talk about sort of a capacity for this. How much is this going to put out per second? Well, um, let's run down here and then just get those numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah, just built. And we also don't have power, but if we just get power in from one side and power in from the other side, then it should be good. Then we'll stop the blinking. There. Ah, uh, no, no, no. That does, that's the part. You have to remember that we... You have to do that on the side as well. Good. Right. Um, this is... Each one of these was 28.9. I'll just uh, redo the calculation. 3.25 times 9 is 29.25. That's the capacity times 16 of these. That means the whole process here, each each wagon or each line, as long as there's a train, of course, only as long as there is a train parked, is 468 per second. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> How many? That's over 10 belts of throughput from each line here. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Like, so even though we are not using that, we, we, are, we are still, suddenly we now have 40 lanes of, of ore out here. Now, that's pretty damn impressive, as long as there's a train park, because it only works when there's a train park. It's not continuous. This one is a lot more modest. So let's say we have a full line here. Each of these is producing 5.25 per second, and I will have 16 furnaces, two furnaces for each output wagon. That means we have uh, the crafting speed is, of this one is... Yeah, if it's producing 5.025 each furnace, and then I divide by 1.2, that means it's only consuming 4.25 two each and each train is going to have like eight 16 consumption so it's going to only consuming if we are consuming from both sides of a an ore train we're only consuming 67 per second 
So if we had like 468 divided by 67, that means we can add, actually have sort of in, in very, in, in very, um, very rough numbers. This, each one, each line here could service basically five of these. Huh. That's, that's pretty insane. That means this part could service 20 lines. That's obviously not what we're going to do. But it also means that we are going to have to have some kind of stacker between this and many rows of that. There's also the other part is it only works when the trains are here. Like if we compare this to one of our new or one of our normals, no ones here. This is continuously working and then putting into a buffer. And then when the buffer reaches a certain threshold, a train comes in and gets, uh, whoa, no path. Oh, that's probably because we have a train station here that, yeah. Um, Oh, that was not good to see a no path for a second. I just that threw me off. I'm gonna need to look for that. Right. So what we um, what we have here, this is continuously working, and when a train comes in, it can load it really quickly because there are six inserts here. That's not the case up at our build here. We will we'll need to have a train parked here almost all the time because this is this is outputting twelve no uh, ten per second. And this one can, at the best of cases, transfer 17. So we need to have a train parked here almost all the time. That means it has to be different from the other part. That means instead of this one opening when it's available, because by the time it, a train comes in, starts loading, it'll take way too long with a single inserter per wagon to load it. So we need to have a train parked all the time. And as soon as it's ready, as soon as it's available, it goes out. It goes out. So each one of these stations, whatever they might look like, has to just have a limit of one, like that. Always try to get one, one train in here, and no matter if it's there, if there's a train assigned, fine. If there's no train assigned, send another one in immediately. So that means we also kind of need to oversaturate trains, which is a completely different train strategy than what we have. We have the kind of an undersaturation where we have more stations than trains because the stations open when there's a train that needs to uh, come in. While what we are now proposing is an oversaturation where we have lots of trains waiting at all stations and they will sort of be pulled out when there's something that needs to be done. Very different, very different idea. I, I, I hope it works. We forgot to edit this one, so that's not been running for the entire episode, uh, but it will work and we'll be getting more batteries soon enough. Cool. Well, I, I think that this is something we are definitely going to continue working on. We have this one. This is a component. This is also a component. I'll leave these two components in the blueprint section. So um, so you can now get some updated blueprints for this. Look at that. We're up to 55 uh, UPS. That's because we're not doing any anything out here. So we should. <laughs> we should. Uh, yeah, we should. We should. We should. Yeah, we're going to ta start making this one. And next time, what we're going to do is trying to tie this together with this here and then try to sort of see if we can uh, we can, we can get a, a some kind of module, maybe like six stations or eight stations. This one leading into eight stations, then it'll be looking pretty nice. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, design session and uh, maybe this has inspired you to try... Uh, direct mining yourself if we can make this succeed even though it's a full overhaul of our train system i think it's going to be really interesting to see if, uh, if if we can recover some ups from it thank you for watching thank you for supporting the channel with your comments your likes your subscriptions and of course particularly with the patron support thank you very much i'll see you guys in the next episode until then take care and as always stay effective